Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical clux rotation. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. Today in this episode, I am going to discuss one more <coughs> uh, problem in trauma, that is bladder injury. So these are the learning outcomes or learning objectives. So after watching this video, all of you should be able to understand what is the epidemiology, etiology, the various types, grading or severity or classification, clinical features, diagnostic workup, treatment and treatment algorithm of a case of bladder injury. So coming to the epidemiology, among bladder injuries, 1.6% of them are because of blunt injuries of abdomen. Approximately 60% of bladder injuries are extraperitoneal, 30% are intraperitoneal, and 10% are both intra and extraperitoneal. So coming to the etiology, pelvic fracture can cause injury to the bladder due to the pelvic fracture fragments of this bone can perforate the bladder and cause, uh, I mean, bladder rupture. Usually, the location of bladder injury is usually extraperitoneal. Bladder rupture because of blunt injury abdomen. When the bladder is full, it is most common in high velocity accident. It may rupture, I mean the bladder may rupture due to sudden pressure increase. The location of the bladder perforation is usually intraperitoneal at the bladder dome. Penetrating injury, you know, stab or gunshot wounds to the lower abdomen cause intraperitoneal bladder injury and concurrent injury of bowel or even large vessels. Hydrogenic injury by pelvic or transurethral surgery, <coughs> cesare like cesarean section, vaginal hysterectomies, retra pubic surgery and transurethral resection of the bladder <coughs> are some of the surgeries notorious to produce injury to the bladder. While the surgeon is doing surgery, he is likely to injure the bladder unless he is very careful. And that is why it is called hydrogenic injury. Coming to the various Types of injury I told already extraperitoneal and intraperitoneal. So, the extraperitoneal, the peritoneum is intact and urine extravasate into the retropubic space but not into the peritoneal cavity. That is extraperitoneal rupture, usually associated with pelvic fracture. Intraperitoneal rupture, the peritoneum over the bladder is injured and urine extravasates into the peritoneal cavity. Associated with urinary peritonitis and ileus and thus more significant than extraperitoneal rupture. This is because of injury to full bladder. I mean the blunt injury to the full bladder can cause intraperitoneal rupture. Mixed type where you will get Features of both intraperitoneal as well as 
extra peritoneal rupture where in fact both ruptures are there in the same patient coming to the grading of bladder injury it is called aa american association of <coughs> severity in trauma that is aast grading so grade 1 you can see only hematoma this is because of contusion and this is because of intramural hematoma where you can see here whereas if grade 1 is because of laceration usually the laceration is not a full thickness laceration it is only partial thickness laceration which you can see here <coughs> grade 2 here also it is laceration extra peritoneal bladder wall laceration but this laceration is less than 2 cm you can see it here and grade 3 the here also laceration this could be either extra peritoneal more than 2 cm or intra peritoneal less than 2 cm of bladder wall laceration you can see it yeah here you can here you can see intra peritoneal but it is less than 2 cm here it is extra peritoneal this this one both are there both are grade 3 and then grade 4 intra peritoneal bladder wall laceration which is less than 2 which is more than 2 cm this one see more than 2 cm intra peritoneal bladder wall rupture grade 5 is laceration extending into the bladder neck or ureteral orifice or trigone here you are seeing this is the laceration in the bladder which is extending to the bladder neck or it can also extend to the ureteral orifice or trigone area so this is the grading to know the severity of the bladder injury this aast grading is very important all of you must know this grading so coming to the clinical features of bladder injury if it is iatrogenic injury the injury may be recognized at the time of surgery itself then immediately the surgery should be stopped hemostasis should be achieved and bladder should be immediately catheterized this is how it presents okay you have to recognize because it is because of the operating surgeon is causing the injury suppose if it is because of trauma it could be either a pelvic fracture or a, a blunt injury to the full bladder the patient typically present with suprapubic pain because of extra of urine and difficulty or inability to pass urine patient cannot pass urine and there may be hematuria and abdominal distension these are the clinical features if it is because of uh, trauma external trauma coming to the diagnostic workup the gold standard is we have to do ct cystography that is what you are seeing here for each grade i am showing a picture for the for all the five grades you are seeing a picture here so here the type 1 is urinary bladder injury it is only urinary bladder contusion only inside you are seeing a hematoma that's all there is no extra vessels now die whereas in type 2 or grade 2 urinary bladder injury this is intra peritoneal urinary bladder rupture with excavation of the dye into the peritoneal cavity type 3 urinary bladder injury it is interstitial urinary bladder injury there is no excavation of the dye type 4 urinary bladder injury is simple intra peritoneal urinary bladder rupture here also you can see <coughs> excavation of the dye into the peritoneal cavity in grade 5 
where you are having both intraperitoneal and extraperitoneal and it is extending into the uh, I mean to the bladder neck also. So the, that area you can see extra visualization of the dye in, in type 5 also you can see. The classic imaging of suspected bladder injury includes you have to take a pelvic x-ray to rule out pelvic fracture, retrograde urethrography and cystography. An abdominal CT scan with a contrast media filled bladder that is called CT cystography can substitute the Menson imaging studies except retrograde urethrography where you want to rule out injury to urethra also and it can provide additional information about concurrent injuries like associated urethral injury also. Here you are seeing a CT cystography, CT of an intraperitoneal bladder rupture. You are seeing here, this is the rupture and you are seeing extravasion of the dye into the peritoneal cavity. This is classical. See, uh, the bladder wall defect is visible at the bladder doom here. And the fluid in the abdominal cavity also you can make out. The dye will extravasate into the abdominal cavity. And this is very classical. And this is the gold standard. That is CT cystography. Coming to the treatment, for extraperitoneal injury, <coughs> by CT cystography, you have to ensure the wound has healed prior to removal of the catheter. <coughs> so, if for extraperitoneal injury, you have to only catheterize the patient, but you have to do CT cystography and ensure the wound has healed before you are going to remove the catheter from the bladder. If the extraperitoneal injury is hydrogenic and recognized at the time of open or laparoscopic surgery, it can be repaired at the time of surgery itself with 2O vicryl absorbable suture. If bladder injury is associated with a pelvic fracture, the patient is undergoing surgery for open fixation or repair of a vaginal or rectal perforation, the bladder should be repaired at the same time. This is the management for extraperitoneal injury. Suppose if it is intraperitoneal injury, usually require open surgical repair to reduce the risk of urinary contamination of the peritoneal cavity. If the injury is small without significant Fluid extravasation, a period of catheterization can be attempted in clinically stable or clinically well patients. But close monitoring is required and a CT cystography after <coughs> weeks should confirm complete healing prior to removal of the catheter. If it has not healed, then open repair will be required. This is the treatment algorithm for the bladder injury. Trauma to the patient with signs and symptoms of or the mechanism concerning bladder injury, whether it is extraperitoneal or intraperitoneal injury. Perform retrograde <coughs> urethrography or CT cystography uh, CT cystography should be performed, retrograde urethrography if there are signs and symptoms of urethral injury. Now you can find out whether it is blunt extraperitoneal rupture. If it is blunt extraperitoneal rupture, assess for complicating factors like urinary tract infection, intravesical bony fragments, grade 5 injury, that is bladder neck or urethral orifice, concomitant vaginal or rectal injury, 
inadequate drainage of uh, uh, that is resulting in hematuria with clots. So if it is uncomplicated blunt extraperitoneal rupture, then patient is undergoing open orthopedic fixation of pelvic fracture or laparotomy for other injuries, you can do the repair at that time itself. No open orthopedic or abdominal surgery is planned, then establish adequate urinary tract drainage with 20 French urethral catheter. Repeat the CT cystography after 10 to 14 days to find out whether the urinary rupture has healed completely. Suppose if it is a complicated rupture, then surgical bladder exploration for both uh, intraperitoneal and extraperitoneal approaches are there for bladder exploration. Repair all identified bladder injuries. Establish adequate urinary tract drainage. Consider perivesical drain placement also. Repeat your <coughs> CT cystography in 7 to 14 days. And if the bladder wall injury has healed completely, you can remove the perivesical surgical drain. You can remove the perivesical surgical drain uh, and sorry. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you think that these videos are very useful, kindly share these videos in your social media and subscribe to this channel. Kindly press the bell button also to get notified regarding my latest uploads. Thank you once again for watching this video. Let us meet in an another video. Until then, bye-bye.